Okay. Senator Rosen, you're recognized for your questions. Well, thank you, Chairman Peters, and appreciate all of you being here today and for the uh, work that you're doing. I'm going to build a little bit upon, uh, upon what's already been discussed, uh, and excuse me, specifically on monitoring and detecting our biological threats because Las Vegas is the entertainment capital of the world. We feature world-class hotels, fine dining, live entertainment, uh, lots of special events, conventions. We're about to have a Super Bowl in a few years, and those things attract tens of thousands and sometimes hundreds of thousands of people to our town. It's our strength but it makes us a target for bad actors, including those who uh, really like to use biological weapons, which, if unleashed, could have devastating impact on the large concentration of people closely clustered on these sites uh, just on and off the Las Vegas Strip. So Assistant Secretary Rascott, um, as you know, biological attacks remain a significant threat as our nation state adversaries and terrorist groups continue to bolster their biological weapons capabilities. Through the BioWatch program, CWMD, you do lead the effort to effectively prepare for, detect, and respond to those bioterrorism threats to the homeland. However, GAO has questioned CWMD's ability to implement BioWatch effectively to detect aerosol attacks. So specifically, in 2021, the IG report says BioWatch only monitors and detects 16 of the 14 biological agents known to be threats. Only six of the 14, excuse me, not 16. So what are you doing to uh, expand the capabilities to monitor and detect all 14 agents known to be threats and help us protect against these aerosol attacks and uh, um, what's your estimated timeline to do that? Well, Matt, thank, Senator, thank you for the question. Um, as you know, BioWatch provides over, the, over 30 U.S. jurisdictions with the capability to detect a biological attack in time to save people's lives. The technology is reliable. It's, uh, it's proven. Uh, also, our, our, our exercise in training program provide, enhances the state and locals. Do, do you work with the state and local partners on this training? We do. Thank we, you. We, tra we provide training. We provide exercises um, through our jurisdictional coordinators who are out there in each of the 30 jurisdictions. Um, specifically, well, let me take a step back. I, in, in January, we decided to take a street, we initiated a strategic review of our entire bio, DHS's entire bio mm -hmm. surveillance program. And part of that review was a very hard look at uh, uh, at BioWatch, where we are and where we need to go. Um, one of the things that we, there are three things where we're going in BioWatch. One, we're enhancing state and local coordination. I think COVID was a little bit of a did to do with it, but it's more than that. So we're out there. Um, I, in, in the fall, I issued the first ever CWMD uh, state and local engagement strategy in support of those objectives. We, brought, we met with all the BioWatch coordinators from across the country in uh, April, explained to them where the, the, what the program the direction was for the rest of the year, solicited their input as to what they needed in a post-COVID environment to continue monitoring. Specific to your agent question, we are partnering with HHS, FBI, and other federal partners, as well as the national labs, to validate the current agent list and see where we need to go with regard to emerging threats. Now, there's a couple of schools of thought on emerging threats, so we're, that's why we're bringing in people from outside of our own organization to make sure we get the full picture. And lastly, um, based on the stakeholder input I've received, we're exploring some options as to whether we can provide state and locals more funding for the training and exercises. Um, we hear a lot of that. I think there's some opportunities there, but we're working through that right now. Thank you. And I want to move on to you, Dr. Gandhi, because uh, last week I know uh, that you announced the creation of the Office of Health Security. And so as the COVID-19 pandemic has demonstrated, as, uh, as uh, Mr. Rascott has just alluded to, uh, we have to have a whole government approach with our state and locals and everyone involved to uh, tackle these health emergencies. And when it comes to chemical and biological threats specifically, I know you'll partner closely with them. So can you talk a little bit about DHS? the collaboration, DHS and CDC, other health agencies, uh, 
how they're collaborating together on our federal medical response infrastructure, including the strategic national stockpile. Uh, what role does DHS play in determining the quantities and types of medicines, vaccines, medical supplies um, that we might need to protect us from an attack? And I'm just going to ask you to kind of tag on to that, if you will, what lessons we've learned from the COVID-19 pandemic that's uh, informing your decisions about the strategic national stockpile um, as it relates to um, chemical and biological weapons? Senator, thank you. DHS has a clear role to play here. We participate on uh, the FEMC, which is a collaboration led by ASPR, which is the Public Health Medical Countermeasures Group. We sit on the advisory board of that group. Uh, what that group does uh, over time is provide advice and counsel as it relates to how we deploy our strategic national stockpile. Uh, and the process for this is, is quite clear where if there are questions that are arise or, or uh, uh, issues that require further investigation or study, they reach back out to DHS. DHS does a material threat uh, determination and then we decide to move forward. So we are uh, very tied with our colleagues at ASPR. And, at, and at, in the broader question, uh, the last 18 months, uh, we, we have operated as a nerve center for everything public health and medical that this department has faced. All of these major issues, COVID, Afghanistan, Ukraine, Southwest border, have clear public health linkages. And in that process, what we have done is we have learned how to engage at a high level with our colleagues at CDC, with our colleagues at ASPR, the Public Health uh, Service. And so our responses are actually all of government responses. And then we lead those when they have DHS equities. As it relates to engagement with state and locals, as engaged as we are at the federal level, we have partnerships uh, at the state level. We lead a every other week call with Southwest Border Public Health and uh, medical uh, officials across the entirety of the Southwest Border. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, we presented uh, on highly pathogenic avian flu to all 50 state health leads. Uh, and so we are all in on that. As it relates to COVID and the, and the uh, lessons learned, uh, the most important lessons here are twofold. One, uh, that uh, we are focused on our ability to be agile. These threats change daily. Our team works 24 hours, seven days a week. Um, and the pandemic has showed that we have to be agile. And so we are building into our office and institutionalizing a quality improvement mantra of plan, do, study, act. When we see something, we plan what we're going to do about it, we'll execute on that, we'll study the results of that, and then we'll move forward. And so we're focused on that as one lesson. And the other uh, lesson is, as you have so rightly pointed out, uh, our ability to be successful in the face of chem bio rad nuke attacks or threats, in the face of changing pandemics, is only as good as the capability and capacity and preparedness of our state and local partners. If we fail them in not providing appropriate data and resources and lessons learned and expertise, um, we are doing a disservice. And so we are very focused on ensuring that we have a strong and true partnership with our state and local partners across the country. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that thoughtful answer. I understand how dynamic it is. I hope in the resources you do include uh, what we think we will need in the strategic national stockpile so we can be sure it's there. Thank you.